As Matt just told us, the sharp rise in police men and women retiring or resigning in New York is eye popping. Take a look at your screen. And we are seeing that trend in other particularly Democratic led cities. In Chicago, the number of officers leaving the job is up 15 percent over last year. And 20 percent of the police force has called it quits in Minneapolis, where former officer Derek Chauvin was convicted last week and the murder of George Floyd. In focus, Dan Linsky, former Boston superintendent in chief of police and managing director for the Kroll Institute is with us. Jason Rance, radio talk show host and frequent friend of Faulkner Focus is here as well. He is live with us uh, from Seattle. Gentlemen, welcome. Jason, I want to first start by taking a look at some video from your city of Seattle since last summer. Stunning hatred aimed at police. Let's watch. I need you to kill yourself. What we're asking for people to do is to think about what it's like to have lost a loved one. That's what anger you're hearing right now. SPD! For people to breathe. I need you to do me a favor. That is Take your guns, put them under your chins, and pull the trigger. <laughs> I think it's a bad thing you all died. Children? A horrible Don't grab my phone. You are your mouth on That might have something to do with these numbers that you see on your screen. Jason Rance has reported some of this to us. We've collected our own information as well. So far, just this year, 66 police officers have left the department. That number could top 100 by the end of May. And in 2020, 193 officers left the police department in Seattle. I want to start there. Jason, pause for a bit. I want to go to Daniel Linsky because... The things that they are saying to cops, that has led to war on cops and how it must feel. Take us inside the minds of police officers at this moment in time. Right now, Harris, law enforcement feels that they are under siege personally and professionally. Uh, and in some instances, professionally, they need to do better. Personally, officers have had their family members threatened because they weren't saying anything against the police on social media. So therefore, if they were quiet, uh, they had to pay for it, and children were being threatened. So police officers feel that the work they do every day, when a call comes in, they're going to run towards those bullets, they're going to run towards those bad guys uh, repeatedly. Uh, and right now, it, it seems like the majority of folks who are vocal about it are talking about defunding the police, getting rid of the police, that all police are racist, all police are corrupt. And that is a morale issue. And unfortunately, the cities and communities in our nation are going to pay the price for that because... Policing has evolved over the past uh, several years. Uh, leadership and, and knowledge has grown. And we're now losing the senior knowledge base of mm. lots of officers with lots of life experience that isn't there anymore. And we don't have a pipeline to fill them. Uh, so, uh, you know, we need the public to support the police in order for the police to do the job. And the police need to rely on the public on how they want to be policed and work together on what that policing model should be. You bring up such a critical point, Daniel, so many of them, but this one in particular, and it touches Seattle. So, Jason, Seattle had a, a minority police chief, a woman, a racial minority, a woman. She was deemed as someone who was a great leader of the police department there. And when they started to defund things, she said she's not going to do her job for less pay. So what Daniel is talking about is that's the top of the food chain in terms of leadership, how do you immediately replace that back? And you know firsthand, Jason, when leadership is not there uh, and, and the, the, the verbal ac you know, vitriol and, and threats come mm -hmm. from citizens in the streets, you know what that looks like for cops on the streets in Seattle. Yeah, we're running leaders out of positions because they're not kowtowing to the radicals who are on the streets screaming ACAB. And then we act surprised that Chief Carmen Best or the King County Sheriff, Mitzi Jo Hanknick, who is also a woman, she's also a lesbian. She's in a position where, again, was celebrated at the time because of all the identity politics, but she didn't immediately go on the attack against her own deputies. Same thing with Carmen Best. It's absolutely ridiculous. And 
as a result, you see police officers leaving this force and forces across the country in record numbers. And it's causing significant issues. And I was thinking about it on the way into the studio today. This is one of the only jobs where society has decided, or at least the left has decided, to define the entirety of the industry by the worst officers, not the best. When it comes to a bad teacher, we say, well, 99% of the teachers are great teachers. We got to back them. And yet when you have a bad apple, we say, no, it's not just one bad apple. It's Mm. the entire tree. And they ignore all of the amazing cops who do really, really good work until, of course, it's politically beneficial to them to go out and say they support Billy Evans. Real quickly, Daniel, I want to talk about that. Is there resistance for the good cops to call out the bad ones? Because that's a sticking point for many people. Well, I, I think there, you know, we have challenges in that, in that, you know, we don't have processes to help police officers do that. And we need to make sure we've got better programs that, uh, you know, some of the things we do and don't do, we don't realize we're supporting bad behavior. So we've got to fix that. But in Karen Best's uh, situation, for years, they were trying to, they're under consent decree, they're trying to recruit and train diverse candidates who represent the community. They brought in a large number of them. So they had, they had done that hiring. And then the defunding police, they wanted to get rid of the newest hires, the 500 mm-hmm. diverse candidates that they had spent time, energy, and money on recruiting to help improve the department. So the very things well, we have identified as improvements were going to be cut and taken away and, and gutting the department uh, without the resources it needed. And, and I would imagine you need people like the former police chief, Carmen Best, in Seattle to come to the table and talk about why she made the hire she did and what she's looking out for. I mean, you need what you talked about, Daniel, and you too, Jason, the, the, the law enforcement leadership to want to stay to address issues in the community and make everything better. And, and be part of that very important relationship and conversation. Great to have you guys kick off the program this hour. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Harris. Thanks, Harris. Well,